Nope, didn't want to do that. Hello, uh, we're here. And I know you're still submitting some of you. I hope that was activity three because that's why I changed. So finishing up activity three, this would be activity four. And when we're done, all I need is what ends up in this box up here. And it really, it, for this question, it's not worth any points, but if we don't do it, we don't get any points either. Okay. So we got a name with stereo centers in it. I'm gonna teach you what the single switch is good for here, because it's also a useful thing. And I'll verbally tell you the single switch is a technique that can change your stereo center from the wrong thing to the right thing. So you use the single switch as a trick to create a new molecule. So I'm gonna draw a flat old cyclohexane, no chair at all, not worth any points. And I'm gonna put, <laughs> I thought that was a circle, that's so cute. Okay, uh, second hexagon. We have groups on one and three. And the groups are, I have to move a little quickly here. Isooctyl, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm assuming hydrogen. And yes, there's nothing else on one. On four, you draw a pentyl first. One, two, three, four, five. And methyls on four and four. And an H. Okay. Neither one of those groups is very bulky for your future, but one's just a tiny bit bulkier because its branch is closer to the ring. That's for you on the weekend. Now we got to decide whether these bonds are wedges or dashes before we get out of dodge here. Uh, stereo center one and three must be R. Let's do one first. It's the isooctyl. I got a four. I'm going to go fast. That's the one. This thing hits a branch sooner. And that doesn't hit a branch until very close to the end. And if I connect those right now, it's clockwise. And that would be R. That means the H is appropriately on a dash. So if you get the right circle, put the number four on a dash. That's scenario one out of two possible scenarios. If the circle's in the right direction, put the four on a dash and make sure your wedge is adjacent. Please don't put wedges in the ring because uh, when we draw chairs, we got rid of wedges and dashes is the reason we learn chairs. So make that the wedge. Go over to the other stereo center and start again. 4H again. One is this thing that hits a branch almost immediately. One, two, three, double branch. One, two, three, single branch. I like this for the two. This for the three. Sadly, I mean, sadly for education, it's already R and I can't give you scenario two. Scenario one was if you connect one, two, and three, and you get what the question's asking for, in this case, clockwise R, then four's on a wedge, adjacent, sorry, four's on a dash, four's on a dash, and adjacent's on a wedge. I'm gonna verbally say the other scenario. And I will give an example where the other scenario would be necessary with one small change. If three was S in the question, then what you did here was wrong because you made it R. If three was S in the original question, here's scenario two. Put the four 
on a wedge. And then the other one's a dash. So if you put that as a wedge and this is a dash, this stereo center has been fixed to S. I didn't need to do that here because it didn't, wasn't supposed to be S. But there's your only two scenarios when you're drawing stereo centers. I gave you the clue to draw every stereo center on nomenclature and this kind of question for the whole semester and the next course. Start the question over. Basically, uh, draw the two chairs for this picture. And I don't want to see wedges or dashes in chairs. Chairs get rid of wedges and dashes. Ups and downs. You're going to read about wedge equals up. Dash equals down. And now you can finish the question over the weekend. And all I need is this box. You finish copying that now. Submit it to the submission area. I think the due date is currently 103. So we're cool. And you got a, like an eight minute window. And a lot of people submitted a couple minutes late on today's activities. They're getting full credit. I have a, at least a five minute grace period always planned for technical issues. So if you were less than five minutes late on any activity today, don't send me emails apologizing. You don't need to, you got full credit. If it was more than five minutes, one student actually sent their document to my email. I'm going to give them partial credit because they were very late on that one. Okay, I'm gonna give them half credit. But uh, I'd like to avoid anything sent to my email. There's always grace periods. I anticipate maybe one more of these activities because it didn't go too badly, I don't think. I'm going to shut up now. I need that yellow box submitted. And then if you can print a copy of this and bring Monday, that's then have your answer in it. That'd be great. You can check your work when we do it together. And I bid you all a very happy weekend unless somebody... Uh, has doctor, a there was no submission box for the first one, even after... Okay. Um, like that five minute grace period, there was no option to submit it. Oh. Um, yeah, so I think I was on that email due 20 minutes late. Okay. Maybe, yeah. maybe what happened was you tried to submit it while I was editing it. And during that instant, you couldn't do it. Because I'm pretty sure I got like 18 I'm, answers. I'm not sure. I was refreshing for like five minutes. There was no submission box. Well, we'll just go with what we have. And I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's one little okay. late. It was a glitch. It wasn't you. It wasn't me. Things like this always are happening nowadays, right? No big deal in the big scheme of things. Okay, so have a great weekend, and I'm going to stop.